what I love about animation is that you can, like, you're not restricted to the real world. You can do whatever you want. You can sort of express any emotion visually, and that's all, like, that. <laughs> That's all media is. Yeah, I came up with the name Hiyodoko. They had this music video that I saw on YouTube ages ago when I was younger. And they had this mask on, the Hiyotoko mask. And I don't know, I just like the look of it, you know. And it's based off of these Japanese legend about this little kid who makes a funny face at a fisherman. And yeah, I just figured, you know what? I like this so much, why don't I use it as my sort of art name? I'd like to move into like more like mature sort of animated um, content, like sort of dramas as opposed to sort of adult animated comedies, which is very popular nowadays. And the, uh, the comedy is often very vulgar. So, you know, I'd love to move away from that and just, you know, treat animation in the same way we treat live action movies. It requires a lot of patience. Um, I think it's like, it's kind of like cooking, you know, you don't really like it at the time. Once it's finished, like you see all the work you've done and it's great. My name's Anthony and I'm an animator in my free time and I'm also of Laotian descent. Laotian culture is it's, it's very old. Um, it derives from, well, it has connections to the Khmer Empire, so the old Cambodian sort of empire. It's like, of course, Buddhism has like roots in like Hinduism, so they've got the same mythology. Buddhism is more about the, the sort of the principles, the lessons, as opposed to the, the magical side. Um, but then there's also a magical side. <laughs> so this is the, um, the three-headed elephant. Um, the three-headed elephant is like, a symbol for the original sort of empire of Laos and which used to be called Lansang and Lansang just means land of a million elephants. My dad's interpretation of the three-headed Buddha is that um, he can hear everyone and he can see everyone um, that is talking to him so he's forever present. My dad was you know he got into monkhood when he was at a young age in Southeast Asia like you'll have this a lot where like a lot of Young boys will just go on to monkhood either because they can't, their family can't sort of afford to have them in their house anymore. It's very common for young boys to get into monkhood and then when they get old enough, they leave. So that's obviously what my dad did and he married my mom. Yeah, he came to Australia as a monk as well. They send monks to one of the temples in, you know, various, various countries. I just remember always being there when I was young. So my parents would go there to like worship. When you go to the temple, the monks will give you these. You go, go up to them, they, um, they give you like blessings. There's a lot of various designs. They'll say their prayers as, you, um, as they like tie it onto you. And it just means like good luck. So you go to the temple, you're in a line, a lot of people, a lot of different food. You, you get your food out, you go like this. Then you offer your food down and you do it until you, like your bowl is empty. Yeah, you also have this in um, this bowl. You have holy water in here. As the monks say their prayers, sort of pour the holy water into this cup. In your own time, you go out into the garden, say your blessings as you sort of pour the holy water into the garden. My earliest memory, memory is me just, you know, playing near the pond, um, floating, like getting leaves and just putting it on the water, see if they float or not. And then maybe getting some little rocks, putting it on the leaves, see how, much, how many rocks I can put on the leaf before it sinks. Laos has their own like special new year, so it's Songgan. And um, during that time, like they, like everyone gets sprayed with water. Like some people have like water guns, and they'll like shoot each other with the water. And the, the whole idea is to sort of, um, sort of purify you. It's like it's a new year, you know, new year, new you. The story of Asia, it's, it's a lot of, a um, lot of different influences from different places. There's a lot of history of um, Laos and Thai because the cultures are so similar, and they even had a lot of wars as well. Yet yeah, Laos is very underrepresented country there's you don't see a lot of um people in film and tv well from laos or like any characters from laos as well uh, i think the only representation i had is king of the hill where they have an episode where this character um says that he's from laos and the two characters ask him are you chinese or japanese and he tells them he's from a landlocked country called laos and they still ask him are you chinese or japanese that's a very common thing that I found um, growing up in this country where people assume that you're from one of the more popular Asian countries as opposed to Laos and when you do tell them you're from Laos they, they just say where is that? Yeah so yeah it can be very lonely because of that. It's hard to find other people from Laos aside from you know family members and family friends 
So it's really rare that I'd bump into anyone else on the street who is also Laos. Because of Laos's like sort of heritage and like sort of like Buddhism and everything, we'll ha we have like a lot of like statues, sort of a lot of ornaments. We like to hand make things. They also like the uh, mythical creature, the Naga, which is like a water-based dragon, like a giant serpent, pretty much with a huge horn. You'll go there and you'll see like very a lot of custom-made sort of tractors, and then they go out and just engineer their own sort of tractor out of spare parts and stuff. It's kind of cool. They've got like a huge sort of market system. They love like making handmade things. This is an example of something that they would have made. So this is like hand woven. Um, it's from Laos as well. Um, yeah, my mom always tells me to be very careful of this because she doesn't have a replacement. Yeah, lately I've started to be like more open. I'll ask my parents more about like Laos and sort of traditions and all that stuff. Like all the stuff that I didn't really have growing up. So that's, so my parents are there. Laos is one of those countries that's been invaded so many times, but yet they still remain a country. They still remain like the culture is still there, and that's it's very important. Like sometimes the culture can be more important than the actual place. So you know that's it's like the story of humanity, pretty much. You know, like you know, like I was born in Australia, but I still consider myself a Laos person just from my culture alone, and it's, it's great.